<laughs> Hello. So we have received like a gazillion emails, you know, asking us how to install open phone windows or how to uh, address some issues when you install in Linux. So in this series of videos, we're going to address now this is a specific question. So we have done already some videos regarding uh, Windows installation, but we hope that with this new series of video, just to create a new format, just to follow up future versions to do things very vertical. So we're going to address specifically OpenSUSE 15.5. We have received question about Ubuntu issues, Shentos issues, and so on. But basically, we 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 use uh, OpenSUSE our choice. But pretty much, I think what we do here might solve the problems in some other Linux installations. But you need to know that there might be some different commands. So to make things just to make things clear. Uh, we're going to work with Windows 16 Linux, which is a fantastic application. Now you can run Windows, uh, you can run Linux in Windows, and here you have the link. You have all the instructions here. We're not going to go into details. Maybe we're going to do another video just to show you a few basic commands, but we already have uh, a playlist addressing this and you have it in the in the, in the description okay so we invite you to visit or just to read, read the documentation or follow the other basic video that we're going to to release so this is one option okay this option is exactly equivalent to installing linux using a virtual machine or doing a dual boot and i will i would like to take this time to say that i will never ever go back to dual booting at least in my computers so in this computer that i'm working right now i have 64 gigs of memory 8 tera of storage and yes you are going to hear this right 24 cores in a uh, laptop computer so it's super powerful so i think just doing using a virtual machine or using windows existing linux is perfectly fine you need to go with, with for that installation uh, of linux and can be you now doing the double partition and so on so the first option is windows existing linux the other option is installing a virtual machine so there are different virtual machines the one that i like the most is vmware vmware you have a free version for personal use you can download and just to show you here how it looks like so basically look at that we have the guest operating system which is linux open source 15.5 just want to stress that running with within windows 11 and the other option that I mentioned is Windows Subsystem 4 Windows, which is this one. So we have a terminal. We don't have that this nice GUI that you have here. You have all the terminal, the command lines, line interface, all your bus program, uh, programs, and you can do exactly the same. The big difference will be that this Windows Subsystem Linux will use all the resources that you have in your computers. Okay, so. If you have 24 cores, it will get access to all those 24 or 4 cores, all the memory and so on. Instead, if you are using VMware, you need to share those resources. So if you're going to run, in my case, that I, let's say I have 24 cores, I would say, okay, I want to dedicate 8 cores to run in VMware, the rest use it for an operating system, and the memory also will be shared. I need to say, okay, use 32 gigs for this and 32 gigs for the other operating system. But if you have enough, enough resources, there is no problem. Then the other option to install is just the dual booting. As I say, I'm not going back never again for a dual booting. So these are the options that we're going to explore. We're going to show the installation in Windows subsystem for Linux and what we're going to do is exactly the same as you are using uh, VMware or dual booting, or even as you are using Mac. 
With Mac, there will be some slight differences, but pretty much will be uh, very similar, very similar steps. So to stress, we're going to use OpenSUSE. So you need to download the tool if you're using VMware. We have another playlist. You have it in the description. So you install VMware. Or if you want to use OpenSUSE lib in this, uh, uh, lib in this case, uh, with uh, Windows subsisting Linux, uh, just follow the videos or the instructions here. It's very straightforward installations. Then after we have the operating system, uh, we're going to install OpenFone foundation version. Okay this one dot org and then we're going to go and install openphone.com the version by esi pretty much uh they're very similar so as soon as we install this one that we're going to fulfill certain requirements uh this installation will be uh pretty much uh straightforward there will be one or two libraries extra libraries later we're going to see uh finally another thing that i want to mention about using a Windows subsystem for Linux or being aware that whatever you, you, you install, uh, those virtual machines or extensions, you can move it from computer. So look at it here. I have OpenSUSE 15.5 and this is where I have everything installed. So this, I can move it to an external hard drive to another computer. This in theory will be my backup. Okay. And then this exactly the same will uh, apply for the Windows subsystem Linux that I have it here, and this is my virtual machine, my image, okay, which is this extension BHDX, and I can move it between computers, put it in an external hard drive. It will be a little bit tricky when you use Windows Subsystem Linux, but, but you can do it. And this is the big advantage. Now you can move these files. You are not just linked to put it in a, in a single location. So with no further ado, Let's move to the installation and I hope uh, you find these videos useful. This will be these videos that we're doing right now will, will be for OpenSUSE 15.5 and at the time of this recording, OpenFone 11 and OpenFone 2306, the ESI version and future versions we hope just to extend it or just to complement these videos because we think that pretty much it will be the same. If you want to do the installation of previous versions, I think also this will apply down to OpenFone 9. Older versions, there will be some differences in particular, in particular some compilers and so on. Uh, also mentioned that here I have a list from, with some instru instructions steps. This list will be in the video description or you will be able to download what are the libraries. The, these requirements that I have here are slightly different from what you are going to find on you know, the website for an open phone. Okay, so thank you and see you in the next video.